Good evening. It's Friday night, and uh, just about 40 days before November 8th, 2016, the election. And this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com and BlogTalkRadio.com forward slash election channel. And uh, that's what we do is we cover independent third-party candidates who are on the ballots. And uh, today we have a candidate. Um, her name is uh, Susan Sintz, and I will um, be interviewing her today. We interview independent and third-party candidates who are on the ballot and um, are the only third-party option in their district. And we're going to have 50-plus candidates like that to present to you. You can see them all at libertarianprogressive.com. So um, right now we have 99.9% Republicans and Democrats in probably elected offices from every state and local jurisdiction for probably the last 100 years. Wouldn't it be nice to maybe have a couple independents, a couple people from a different party? Just asking for maybe out of a body of 435 members of Congress, maybe 10, maybe 50 at first, and let's see how that goes. So, Susan, since uh, Legal Marijuana Now um, is the, the party, and she's running for the U.S. House of Representatives in Minnesota in District Number 4. She's the only third-party candidate in her area, and you can visit sintforcongress.com, S-I-N-D-T-F-O-R, Congress. C-O-N-G-R-E-S-S dot com. And Susan, thank you for joining us today. And how are you doing this Friday night? I am doing well, thank you. Thank right. you for You're having very me. You're welcome. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. And thank you so much for running so we could interview you. You're in the game. Thank you. And um, you're giving people an option. Was, thank you. That, that is our intention. Um, Minnesota is a unique state. We are um, a non-initiative state. So unlike Colorado, California, some of the states that have been able to petition to put the question on the ballot, Minnesota does not have that ability. We must leave it to our legislators to make the wise decision to put that question on the ballot. So we went about it indirectly. We named the party after the question, and we go about putting candidates on the ballot with the name of the political party, Legal Marijuana Now, on the ballot next to the candidate's name. Yeah, or maybe it should be that called re-legalized marijuana. Wasn't it legal at some point in our history? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just thought of that, yeah. Semantics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the Legal Marijuana Now Party has been in existence in Minnesota um, in 2014. We had a candidate earn 60,000 votes, um, gave us ballot status, um, Minnesota has a very short petition window. We had two weeks in the beginning of the this spring. The weather was poor. Road construction was everywhere. But we collected the signatures we needed to get a few candidates on the ballot. Wow. All right, so you only had two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Um, we, had, we had quite a few people that were running for the state legislature for smaller districts. Um, those were really quite difficult. Most of the people you find street just happened to be in the area, not necessarily from the area. Um, my district, a congressional district, includes St. Paul and the surrounding communities. So it was um, a much larger area. We needed 1,000 signatures. I believe I handed in probably over 1,400. Great. So hey, awesome. I had and, a, um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. You know, actually, you know what I want to ask you: Are you have you been in the debates? Are you going been invited to the debates? Are there going to be debates in your district? There is a forum, uh, maybe somewhat of a debate format, um, on Monday, October third, at one of the local high schools, and um, the incumbent, the Democrat, will be there along with the Republican. Uh, the three of us will have our opportunity. To make our case. Awesome. I've been that waiting a long time great. for this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, and actually, so, so why are you such an advocate for marijuana um, legalization? Some people call it cannabis, you know, and there's industrial hemp. I'm sure you want to yeah. uh, legalize industrial hemp as well. Can you tell us what are the, um, why would it be a good idea? What's the holistic effect of it? You know what I mean? 
Well, my platform is personal freedom, public health, and sustainable communities. And I think that the legalization of cannabis, hemp, marijuana uh, touches all of those. Um, you know, first and foremost, America is based on personal freedom. I think the idea is that if, if individuals are given an opportunity to make personal choices, they make great decisions. It's only when our government starts limiting our choices, challenging our will, it sets us up. Um, maybe more important than that is that it's medicinal. As it turns out, cannabis is a major medicine, was a major medicine. In 1937, when the American Medical Association listed, when, when they first started listing drugs and they created the scheduling system, they referred to it as marijuana, knowing that the medical establishment would never allow them to schedule cannabis as a Schedule One drug. Um, you know, fortunately, there were uh, slang terms that they could use. So as it turns out, it is a major medicine, and there are thousands and thousands of people who aren't allowed to get their medicine, have to go into the criminal economy uh, to procure me- their medication. Um, I believe there's 24 states that have some form of a medical marijuana program at this time. There are 18 states with some form of medical marijuana on the ballot. So um, the time has come. It's time for us to release all of the nonviolent marijuana uh, offenders. There are so many people in prison for marijuana crimes, and at the same time there are people around this country making millions growing and (laughs) selling marijuana. uh, It's just wrong. It's, it's, I, I have been my whole life uh, recognizing the, the failure of prohibition. And as time has gone on, I've learned more and more about cannabis and its medicinal qualities. The, in, the industrial uses for hemp and the seeds are, you know. I believe that um, there's many um, educational uh, groups across the country that have done a great job of informing the public of the truth about cannabis, hemp, marijuana. And now it's time for us to move on to the reform. And um, I'm, I'm so lucky that I have an opportunity to be in a position in my life where I can take advantage of this opportunity and get on the ballot and state my case. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen, I mean, polls, if they mean anything, I mean, they should about, you know, the majority of people, about 60 percent of all Americans, um, you know, want to legalize it. And that's not just for medicinal purposes. And um, so there is a majority there. There's a majority that say they want to throw Congress out. I mean, you're running for two years. I mean, you know, with within a body of 435 Democrats and Republicans who have had this wrong policy and you're offering something right. You know what, though, what kind of. I hear this once in a while, and it's very rare, actually, but it's when someone says, oh, they just want to smoke weed, and, you know, that's no big issue. It's actually, you know what, Mm -hmm. it's a huge issue that affects the criminal justice system, the economy, health care, families. I mean, um, lots of different things. I mean, it's a huge, huge issue. It is a huge issue. It, it touches so many aspects of our life. Crime. And I believe yeah. if, if our leaders could make this one change, it would require a change in our thinking, in the direction, in so many areas of our life. It is an essential um, issue. And, uh, you know, I, of course, have got concerns about the environment, the economy, jobs, uh, about, you know, trade and foreign affairs. There's, there's just a lot of important issues that we need to deal with, and it's ridiculous for us to be talking about this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, we, we I mean, need to move on. It is time to move on. I mean, it, it is something holding us back. Um, I mean, yep. there's the issue of crime. I mean, you know, crime is another issue this affects our budgets um, and, and also the lost yep. potential of, you know, spending time away from other issues that we should be focusing on. And so I would urge people, Absolutely. if you're, no matter what side of the political spectrum, you look at uh, Susan's um, candidacy and, and some of her other uh, fellow candidates in her party, and uh, 
you know, to, to get your voice heard out there. Let's go through, you know, let's go through um, bullet point issues, you know, just kind of real quick. And we can come back to the um, legalized marijuana, legalized cannabis. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I wonder sure. if there's a case to make that it actually is even illegal, even though, you know, you don't want to be caught with it. Because, I mean, didn't it take a, a constitutional amendment uh, to make alcohol illegal? and But for um, marijuana you're going to have the same standards. Um, it didn't quite take that. Um, so, uh, mm-hmm. so that's always quite interesting, but what about, um, you know, we'll go on your list on your website. Again, we're, uh, Susan since, um, is who we're talking to running at, for the U S house of representatives district number four in Minnesota, S I N D T F O R Congress.com. And, um, Actually, you do have uh, your issues here. Um, what about, um, uh, well, abortion? It says here you're pro-choice. Um, and that's pretty cut and dry unless if you want to expand on it. And may I ask you a little bit about the the budget because you wrote the budget on here as well? Well, sure. Um, I, again, I'm pro-choice. Um, I believe that the decision to have an abortion is a matter of personal choice, much like the decision to use a drug or to get married. Um, <laughs> so that, yeah. you know, personal decisions need to be made by individual citizens. Our government officials really have no business making personal decisions for us. Um, in terms of the budget, um, I support, what we really need to do is um, reduce the amount of money that we spend in the military and increase the amount of money we spend in education. Um, uh, an educated population can solve numerous problems. It's amazing what people can do when they get together and use their mind. Um, I had a career as a high school science teacher for 10 years, and um, I'm very concerned about our education system and the future, and we need to start thinking outside of the box. And um, again, this is the reason why maybe we should end drug prohibition so we can move on to more important issues like solving um, health care. We need quality health care that's affordable and available for everyone. Uh, as a business owner, I, I pay quite a bit for my health care, and I anticipate I'll be paying quite a bit more. And mm-hmm. I don't believe it's because the cost of health care has gone up. I believe it's um, more related to the profits of larger corporations. Um, I believe our government should work as a servant to the people and uh, create laws to protect our personal rights and public health, and right now those are taking a backseat to corporate profit. What about energy? You have energy as an issue as well. That's important. Uh, well, again, I was, I'm a scientist, and I know that um, there are numerous forms of energy available to us. It's a matter of um, us um, starting to um, change our priorities. We need to end our addiction on fossil fuels and start harnessing renewable resources. We need to stop destroying the environment to extract fuel and transport fuel. It's, it's not necessary. Uh, and the profits are not going to the people that own the land that's being destroyed. It's a vicious cycle. And at some point, we've, we've got to take control of our energy and what we're doing to our environment, what we're doing to the earth. The sun is shining down on us every day, and when the sun's not shining, the wind is blowing. Uh, and I recognize that you can't sell the sun. Um, and so I, I see where uh, keeping us dependent on fossil fuels to heat our homes, keeping the large corporations uh, in large profits. Yeah, and I, you know, um, that's interesting because that also ties into maybe. Um, national security. I I urge people to maybe take a look at. Um, there's this documentary I saw, and, and you can see it. it it's uh, it's about and it shows like pictures and stuff of how fracking works. And um, and I you know I'm pretty libertarian, you know, with a lot of policies I have. But if it is something that affects like the drinking water for all of us, and and if a corporation creates such a big mess where they would go bankrupt in paying, you know, fees because they wouldn't, they don't even have enough money to do the cleanup after they cause the problems, you know, then, then that, you know, shouldn't happen. Um, and, uh, 
and I doubt that they can clean up some of these messes uh, that that are happening. Um, uh, let me, yeah, there's, um, yeah. So, I mean, and and we're going to war over oil. We spend billions, and and actually be in our national security interest probably to. Uh, you know, be more energy independent as well and better for future Absolutely. generations. Yeah, yeah um, I, it, it sure this seems to me it's really just a battle over resources and uh, it's not necessary. If you're going to subsidize you anything for ethanol, you could probably use hemp, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hemp would be a, a much better product. It doesn't compete with food. Hemp actually is environmentally friendly. It's a weed it doesn't require a, uh, a large amount of irrigation, and it's a natural insecticide. Um, it, it's definitely much better than using corn. And, and by the way, that documentary, you can just YouTube it. It's called um, Leaking Frack Wells Are Not mm-hmm. Rare. It's called Leaking Frack Wells mm-hmm. Are Not Rare. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, Susan, what I think about mm-hmm. Hemp is um, and marijuana is it, and this is kind of a weird theory. It's not something I necessarily embrace. If there was ever a pre-civilization, I think, um, and they were wiped out, and we're just kind of going through a second round, you know, history repeating itself, and we're starting to get to the cusp of a, uh, you know, more advanced civilization. I think one of the things that might be a fingerprint or something that's a shadow from that would be the marijuana. It might have been some genetically, super genetically modified plants. They created two strains, one for health and one for building. And it was so powerful, it, it lasted through the Ice Age. It lasted through the asteroids that came down here. And, um, you, you know, if we were to create a GMO product, you know, um, that could do so many amazing things, I mean, it might be the marijuana plant. But, um, it, it's very interesting that you say that because I I did view I'm, I don't recall if it was a video I saw a little short video or something that referred to Pam Stormy on the idea that um, the molecules of life have been spread to the universe to uh, you know uh, populate um, other planets and along with that there must have been uh, the DNA for cannabis because it is necessary for humans to survive and it indicated that research is discovering that when we ingest the cannabinoids, our endocannabinoid system will synthesize molecules that otherwise don't even exist that are healing rejuvenative molecules. Um, and it, it, it's, it's literally the magic of the universe, the, the combination of cannabinoids and the human DNA and what we can synthesize to heal our own body. Uh, and this is the magic of cannabis that, has been has been kept from us in all this time, and now uh, we are so fortunate to have states like Colorado, California, Oregon, Washington, and even D.C. that are um, returning to homegrown, allowing people to grow their own. And we start we're starting to see the research. We're starting to see the facts coming out every day. Um, we see new data today. Yeah, I, I think Alaska post, too. Um, although although American, it might. Yeah, Alaska too. Yeah, I'm sorry, I left them out. <laughs> um, it's hard to keep track. There's such a, a variety of different types of regulation, um, and the legal marijuana now party uh, are four tenets. Uh, n- number one, first and foremost, is legalize homegrown. And two would be erase marijuana convictions. We really need to um, ban employment drug testing and. I'd like to just abolish the DEA. We really don't need our government officials trying to save us from ourselves. Um, the Legal Marijuana Now Party, um, you know, stands for legalization of marijuana. But as uh, personally, I'd like to see the end of all drug prohibition. We need to end the black market and the crime and violence in our streets. Um, you know, there probably wouldn't be meth rampant. if you know, marijuana and some of the other natural drugs were more legal in the first place. Exactly. 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 And if um, anything, and it right should be now we have issue. this terrible, yes, we have this opiate addiction. Um, many people who are seriously in pain are now not able to get uh, their medication. They find them, they find themselves um, yeah, moving on to um, a street drugs to replace it. Um, it's, it's terrible. 
our medical the, establishment the, is is creating this this uh, this uh, snowballing effect, and the cannabis really could it. replace it. Well, you can't patent the plant, but I believe that they've tried to patent some of the um, applications of the cannabinoids. Yeah, and that's um, why it's important that you're but, able to grow your own, you know, and uh, right. grow it organically and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, and even just I, to eat I it. believe that there's room for yeah, sure. There's room for dispensaries. Um, there's also room for medical programs if they want to, you know. Um, drill down on the, the ratios of the different cannabinoids to, you know, get, provide specific medication. Uh, there's room for that too. Uh, but ultimately uh, human beings have the right to grow, to cultivate and consume this plant. No one has ever died from the effects of consuming marijuana cannabis. You know, um, Susan, the, and, um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go no, please. I'm sorry. There's just about a three <laughs> second delay, so I think that's why I didn't mean to interrupt at all. Yeah, please. That's continue. okay. I was just going to say that is is probably the most uh, ridiculous uh, that alcohol. We, we went through alcohol prohibition. It was a, a few short years, and society realized how devastating it was. And a few short years later, um, a whole list of new drugs were added to the list of prohibition, and we just started playing that game and it's time for it to end yeah it, it is it's beyond time and hopefully you know it looks like people are waking up like you said with all these states i mean um it that could be the way of the future for sure uh you, you know you know in world war ii you remember who general Patton was right i think i've heard of the man yeah, you know, at the end of World War II, he forced the German citizens to tour the concentration camps to kind of see, like, what their government was up to. I think right. people should have to see the victims of the drug war. I mean, there are families that have been split up. There are people, like, right now in a cold cage somewhere, you know. I mean, there's real people behind this that are suffering, you know. I mean, there might be more are, people free. Yeah. Yeah, there's people who are ill, not getting their medication. There are families that are torn about, children taken away from their parents um, because they choose to medicate. There are people in prison who have, are, you know, unfairly imprisoned. Uh, and the, and the, the prison environment with private for-profit prisons, um, that is a crime. That is just terrible. I, and it just amazes me that this is the country I live in. This is America, land of the free and the brave. And I'm very disappointed in this situation. Yeah, that does seem like a weird novel, like um, like, like that would be some kind of strange novel where there's private prisons yeah. and people go to jail for growing this plant that makes them happy and healthy. Yeah, it does sound crazy. Um, you know, one proposal that I was just thinking of is like, if you go to jail for marijuana, you should at least have the right to move to a state instead of going to jail where it's legal, maybe, you know. That's um, very interesting. It, it would make, be more of a point maker, you know. I mean, it's – but, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would just kind of show the impact of, you know, someone being a refugee having to move to Washington or Colorado. Now, I'm interested – if I can just take a side note here. You said you're a small business owner. You've been a science teacher you know, another tragic thing is we've seen small and mid-sized businesses, not um, the, the amount of new ones uh, opening up over the last couple decades, kind of on a decline. Do you have any ideas um, or thoughts about, you know, uh, small and mid-sized businesses and, and maybe seeing that chart go the opposite way in the future? Well, then it's been my experience um in business that there are there's regulation taxes fees licensing at, at every turn there's always something new it seems that every uh every year new regulation new new requirements are handed down makes it more and more difficult for people to stay in business and that's what we need we need jobs in our communities we need to encourage small businesses to help um the money cycle through the the local community we need to create opportunities for people to provide their skills and their services 
so that our communities can thrive and we can we can all prosper. Uh, and and most of these people in Congress have you know most of them are, have never started a business or I, I don't know what your opponents have done, but it would be good to have someone who has like you know real life experiences and who is going to be a better advocate for small business than a small business owner, you know? Thank you. I'm actually in a very interesting line of work. About five years ago, I started a business making the flavored nicotine liquids for the personal vaporizers. And yeah, and that's probably a couple helped months a lot ago, of it, Well, um, the, it is now regulated as a tobacco product by the FDA, um, starting on August 8th, the entire vapor industry has been uh, lumped in with tobacco. And um, as a tobacco manufacturer, there's really not much I can say about the industry anymore. So you can yeah, have... I mean, I vape, and this has helped me quit smoking. And, um, you know, I make sure I use the lowest setting on the battery, so it's like 2.2 volts or whatever, you know. But, I mean, it it's... A lot better. I don't cough in the morning and stuff, and I smoke cigarettes for like two decades. I mean, it's, you know, so it's prob- well, what, possibly. Well, what we're finding is the um, the FDA has created a regulatory pathway for all new tobacco products um, that requires a um, how would I say um, ridiculously high amount of income which would pretty much financially eliminate all the small businesses. You're going to see 99% of the small businesses go out of business in about two years. And um, that will leave the large tobacco companies to provide you with your product. Yeah, unless if maybe we could elect someone like you to Congress, (laughs) I mean, and more people like you. Um, I mean, this is very important. I think – Jill Stein said, like, treat this election like as if your life depends on it, because, you know, in many ways it does. And um, it does. Yeah. I, I, uh, I believe this is the year um, we have the, our, our options. What we're looking at um, for president are um, scary at best. <laughs> and I, I believe this is the year that everybody really needs to go and vote. They need to um, use that that one opportunity, that one thing that we get in America is our opportunity to vote. And um, in Minnesota, if you're not happy with the options, we do have a candidate running for president for the Legal Marijuana Now Party. And again, it'll say that next to his name on the ballot. So if you're undecided, we have an option for you. And there will be no question what your vote represents. And Susan, I think even more importantly, you running as a congressional candidate, I think there's a lot less um, partisanship or um, divisiveness as far as Congress goes. People, like if you're on one side or another, you don't feel like it's as big of a risk voting for someone in Congress because you're one out of 435. Yep. So you, they really have right. everything to gain and nothing to lose, you know, in, in selecting you. And mm. uh yeah, in a lot of ways, I'm right. hearing a lot of consensus, a lot of conservative things that you're saying with business and, and a lot of liberal things. I mean, it's kind of like a fusion candidacy that you have here. Well, good. <laughs> we uh, we have a candidate running in the 5th Congressional District also, which would be Minneapolis and many of the surrounding communities. Um, that would cover one quarter of the state of Minnesota has the option to vote for a legal marijuana now candidate. We felt it was um, it was worth the time to get a presidential candidate so that we could offer that that option to every citizen in Minnesota has the ability to make that statement. Um, and I do recognize that you know the presidential vote is a is a bit more precarious, and people are going to take that one maybe a bit more seriously. Um, however, we do, as you said, we need to consider Congress. Um, we need Congress to write, to write the laws. The president represents the agenda, and then Congress is either going to work with the president or we're not going to get anything done. Yeah. So, um, well, let me ask you real quick about the TPP. Very, 
Um, is that, you know, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and, and is that right. something that's what, – what do you think about it so far? I mean, not that we know too much about it because it's all hidden, Well, that's, that's what I think. I don't know too much about it. I know that it's a, a very long document, as many uh, um, government documents are. Um, I'm not sure how many people have had a chance to read it in its entirety. Um, I understand people that have had a look at it and are opposed to it claim that it would give large corporations um, the right to sue entire governments if they interfere with their projected profits. Um, I'm I'm all about trade. Trade is great, but we need fair trade. I would like to see real fair trade. And as a business owner, and I'm working on international business myself, I'm, I'm very concerned about um, policies that our government uh, agreements they make with other countries. Uh, and as, as from what I can tell, if TPP is anything like NAFTA or CAFTA, it's probably not the fair trade agreement we need. Yeah, it's some crony capitalism. I mean, I have pro- I have projected, pro- um, you know, uh, profits of a trillion dollars. So, you know, um, yes. so where I want my cut. Um, so, what about um, uh, healthcare? I, I mean, let's go back to that. Do you support um, public okay. option, uh, Medicare for all, um, other more prevention, or you know, what 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 do you think about that? Yeah. I- I would I would support a single payer healthcare system, maybe something like um, Canada. Um, definitely, we need healthcare for everyone, Medicare for everyone. I would not um, get rid of the program we have now until it's replaced with something um, that's manageable. Uh, I believe the cost of healthcare, the increasing cost of healthcare, has something more to do with maintaining profits than it does with actually providing health care. And um, I think we need some transparency. We need, there needs to be some sort of limit on the profits that are available within the healthcare arena. Um, I think the EpiPen is a wonderful example. What, what is the price you put on your life? What, what is the fair price for something like the EpiPen? And that's, that's something we need to discuss. We need to figure out certainly a 400% increase if that really is due to the cost of the packaging and marketing and making, getting the product out there, then we have a serious problem and we need to fix that. Yeah, there's definitely, definitely a serious problem. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I think, I think a public option um, would be something a lot, actually not what I think, but the polls and most people actually do want a Medicare for all. If you look at the polls um, and, and the amazing thing about Canada's healthcare system when i think when they passed the bill it was like five or ten pages long hmm. wow wouldn't that be wonderful yeah. something doable <laughs> readable um it you know it 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 should be simplified um i i believe our food should be our medicine and um our medicine should be our, our food i've always wondered i've always you know hospitals are notorious for having poor food options mm-hmm. how can that be Horrible um, food so options. We, yeah, I mean, as far as like options. the garden as you can get. Yeah. Yeah, it's rare that the doc, your doctor, will prescribe a good meal to solve your problems. Mystery and meat. I, yeah. <laughs> so that you know, those are some of the issues that we definitely have to consider. Um, I believe with healthcare right now, um, if you use tobacco, your um, insurance rates are going to be inflated. Um, I don't believe that there's any regard to um, the amount of exercise or how much sugar you intake, how much processed food you eat, whether you're vegetarian, whether you grow your own food, whether you drink enough water, get enough sleep. All of those are relevant to good health. And um, I really don't believe that your insurance rates should reflect your personal choices. If you choose to live an unhealthy lifestyle, you get to live with an unhealthy body. Yeah, you know, sugar is probably worse. I mean, you know, one 16-ounce um, can of Coca-Cola, I mean, you could take like a tenth of that can and just top it with sugar. And uh, and if you have 
you know, plenty of those a week or something equivalent to that, you know, you're just having sugar after sugar after sugar. Um, well, and part uh, of what we need to do is educate yeah. people so they know that, but then we also need to give them the right to make that choice. I mean, certainly we don't need government officials sure. limiting how much pop we get, unless, of course, you're in New York. And right. You can't get a big gulp anymore. <laughs> no, I'm glad you said that. I so. mean, yeah, we, we it's much better to have people educated than they can make their own choices, of make course. Their own absolutely. choices. They'll make great choices. They will make good decisions if they get the right information. Um, so go. let me ask you this. Uh, who are some of your favorite, um, you know, past or present people, elected or not, if you wouldn't mind sharing that with our audience today, Susan? Um, I uh, probably uh, align with some historical women who have made, you know, um, made history, um, assuming that the history that I learned about them is accurate. <laughs> yeah. Um so uh, as a scientist, I've always um, looked at Jane Goodall as someone who really stood up for what she believed in and worked hard to try and, you know, defend our environment and the world. Um, I also really get a kick off of uh, listening to Elizabeth Warren uh, when she speaks her mind. Um, just a couple people. Yeah, no, we appreciate that. And uh, I think um... – yeah, yeah, uh, def- definitely. Um, and well, what about uh, you? So you have an event on October the third, and that sounds pretty exciting for sure. Uh, you know, that's something to look forward to. Uh, any other events coming up on the uh, horizon here? Uh, well, I am anticipating that I would be invited to some of the local high schools to talk to the um, poli sci class. Um, about the political process and how um, our party goes about getting on the ballot. Um, haven't had that invitation yet, but school just started a couple weeks ago. So, uh, all right. And there are. Yeah, let me ask. Uh, oh, go uh, ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I've had a couple um, cable TV uh, little spots that I put together that are being aired. Um, but other than that, my intention. Uh, Being that I am very busy with my business, my intention was to get on the ballot, knowing that being on the ballot is is going to get more votes than I could, you know, possibly advertise. That that is the key is getting on the ballot, and and now I'm just having fun. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely, have fun with it, and um, and you never know, you know, um, and 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 at the least reaching lots you're going to reach everyone actually who decides to vote um in some way yeah so we've, that's we've done some local great. parades we've done some of the local open streets events we've there's been a lot of um activities this fall that we've been able to go out and uh, interact with the public and we're very <laughs> popular yeah that that's an excellent idea susan i mean very smart idea to name the party that and uh, so um susan sent that's who we've been talking with um and you can learn more at um, Sint for Congress, um, S-I-N-D-T-F-O-R. Oh. Did I lose you? Oh, actually, I, I'm, I have my backup oh. phone because that first mic went out, but I'm prepared. So, yes, uh, there Sint we go. for Congress, uh, the 4th District of Minnesota. And you can hear me okay on this line, right, Susan? I can hear you, Yeah. Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, great. great. No, I, I can hear you now. Yes, yes. So, okay. uh, well, it's All been right. a pleasure. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to, um, you know, exp- take the time here to be with our audience, and, and there will be a bigger audience later on because we're going to put this on libertarianprogressive.com. It will also go on our YouTube page. And I encourage our listeners to share these videos. We're going to have 50-plus candidates who are on the ballot for the U.S. Congress to, for this year, 2016, and we're specifically interviewing people that are the only third option in their district. So, Susan, any final words of wisdom uh, before we end the interview? Well, I'd like to say thank you so much for what you're doing, um, interviewing candidates that are on the ballot. It is um, a, a challenge. It's uh, a lot of hard work, and it takes a lot of dedication. So anybody else who is um, in the same situation I'm in, 
my hat's off to you. I know um, how much it means to you and how much work you've done. And so I really appreciate that you are helping us to get the word out, um, let people know. You know, third-party candidates, are, it gives us an opportunity to really test drive the issues. And uh, we tend to be outliers, and we have to stand strong to our convictions. And so it is, um, I really appreciate you giving me an opportunity to get my message out there. Uh, and it's, right. it's time. We appreciate you, and you are the, I mean, there's lots of heroes in life, but, I mean, people, this is a real hero right here, I would say. You know, and, and like you said, all these third-party candidates, I mean, they're really giving you an option, and I hope people support them, you know, phone bank for them, uh, et cetera. I mean, you know, it's, it's, we have to take accountability. Um, you know, accountability starts with getting off the couch and uh, getting, you know, participating. So. Yep, 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 that's right. Thank you. It's time for right, us well, to get up and get great. active and change. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, um, I hope you have a great weekend, Susan, and good luck in your campaign. Thanks very much for your time. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. You all have a good evening, too.